Get ready for your weekly dose of pixie dust with Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Patrick Dougal. And today we have so much to talk about. Again, lots I need to stop saying that, but God, there is so much to talk about. It's crazy. My mind goes nuts. And uh, let's start with the big holidays coming up, Easter. And of course, if there's a holiday, it's a Disney holiday, isn't it? Yep. There's stuff going on in the parks. Patrick, why don't you take it away with what's going on? Actually, by coastal, it's going on at Walt Disney World and Disneyland. Yeah, uh, well, of course, at Disney, they have, um, usually in Main Street, they have, like, their special trolley show, and obviously they do, like, an Easter version winner, where all people learn, like, Easter spring. It's usually the first start of their spring show. Um, also, you can meet the Easter Bunny over at Magic Kingdom and or at Epcot. Um, where do they put him at Epcot? Because that seems so strange to me. Usually, I've seen him in the, in the UK pavilion. Okay. Um, behind, uh, where they usually have, like, a band playing. Interesting. And then at the Magic Kingdom as well. Yeah. It's gonna, it's across, usually across, um, from Times Square Theater, right in the front, behind the main, uh, behind the train station. Um, so, also, they used, they started this thing last year called, like, the Extravaganza, where you purchase this, um, map. For about four ninety five. For four ninety five, right. and there's little stickers on the 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 map with little character eggs, and you go around the park, and you, it's like a scavenger hunt, and you find these eggs, and you put the sticker where you found the egg, and then once you return it, you get a little special prize, and I think this year is like um, I guess it's like a plastic egg character. Yeah, the um. I think it's a, a little interesting that they charge four ninety five for this. Not that it's really not that much at all, and it's kind of cool, but it just is very reminiscent to me of like Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom and that the Kim Possible thing they had. What is it now at Epcot? The it's Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb, where you know it's it's another scavenger hunt type thing, but those obviously cost way more money to create this. That the, that technology and I, it's free, so I don't know. I was like, why are they charging for this Easter hunt? You don't get a prize. Yeah, but those cards that they give you and everything. I don't know. It's not a prize. I think you're okay. pretty much paying for the prize at the end. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And actually, it was funny because I was reading about it, and it said like you don't even need to finish to get the prize. Yeah, you can probably just take the stickers and like put them on. Anywhere. You just need to turn in your map, is what it comes down to. So that's kind of cool. Um, they're doing that here at Disney California Adventure as well, which they did last year. But they're also doing it at Disneyland this year. So that's kind of cool. I guess it was a hit last year. And um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we can meet the characters, uh, the Easter Bunny at our springtime roundup, which is right behind Big Thunder Mountain. It's a cool little area with a petting zoo and stuff, but not only can you meet the Easter Bunny there, they're bringing all the, the, um, Disney bunnies out. So we've also got the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. We've got Br'er Rabbit from Song of the South. We've got Thumper from Bambi and Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, as well as the Easter Bunny. So, uh, I also saw um, recently that Roger Rabbit was out over at your park. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you know that Roger Rabbit was supposed to be, like, one of the main iconic characters for Disney MGM Studios when it originally opened? I can see that. Yeah, like, Michael Eisner really wanted him. Roger Rabbit to be one of the characters, but then they got into that whole legal dispute mm-hmm. over like who really owns Roger. And I think on Easter Day, don't quote me on this, but I know they have either like a pre parade thing of where um it's at least a hundred or so of these like girls dressed in these giant pastel Easter dresses that parade down Main Street. You know, when I was a kid that I remember the Walt Disney World Happy Easter Parade on television every year. And, like, that was Easter for me. Like, I can remember waking up... You know, like, how they have the Christmas Day Parade now? Yeah. Well, it was... I don't even remember the Christmas Parade as a kid. I remember the Easter Parade. And the year that they stopped airing that was, like, the biggest, biggest bummer for me. I've even got some of the the old ones, like, burned onto DVD in terrible quality. But I just... (laughs) loved the Happy Easter Parade. Um, the fact is they really don't do too much for Easter at our parks anymore. I feel like they do a little bit more at Walt Disney World, but man, Easter used to be huge at the Disney parks, and now it's just like kind of an after- afterthought, which is a bummer to me. 
Mm. But um, so that little parade you're talking about, that's in addition to your normal day parade. Yes. And is it like floats or what? No, it's just like hundreds of girls dressed in these giant pastel dresses. Oh, that's what they used to, that's how they used to end the parade on television. It's actually some, um, oh God, it's like all local beauty queens or something like that. I have no idea. Yeah, there's a a story and a history behind that, I remember. But Um, speaking of Disney-ish things, um, Swan and Dolphin here... It's not technically a Disney hotel, but Uh they are doing some really cool things for Easter as far as peeps go, because... Oh, what are they doing with peeps? Oh my god, they have a whole, like, peep menu, where you can get, um, they have s'mores with peeps, they have a peep milkshake, and they have chocolate-covered peeps. And they're having this whole, like, peep menu for Easter, which sounds awesome. (laughs) That's kind of cool. I'm actually not a big peeps fan, uh, I just... I don't think they're very good, but uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I actually bought two boxes the other day just so that I could have some Peeps battles. Have you ever had a Peeps battle before? Only you. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you take a toothpick and you put it in the front of two Peeps and you have them face each other. And then you put them in the microwave and you see which one, you know how they blow up in the microwave? Yeah. You'll see which one will take the other one out first. <laughs> That's why I bought peeps. <laughs> I love the look on your face right now. <laughs> hey, Jeff, can you explain um, how old you are? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's awesome. Yeah, I would do that, except I usually just let them go single. Just one at a oh, time. Oh, single? Yeah. yeah. But, but let them suffer them the by themselves. Yeah. It, this is what we did last year, uh, and this is what like I'm doing at work. So. <laughs> <laughs> Working uh, hard. Working hard, yeah. All right. So Easter at the parks. Go enjoy it. Go do your hidden eggs. I really want to do the hidden eggs thing. It starts uh, April 10th and ends on the 20th, Easter Sunday. So enjoy that. Moving on from there, uh, you got some exciting news happening at Walt Disney World, Patrick. Yeah. Um, Imagineers have started riding Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Woohoo! Are so, they looking for volunteers? I guess that means it's done. <laughs> it's done-ish, I'm sure. There's actually a, um, a really cool panel discussion, it looks like, is going to happen here. I don't know the exact date. I want to say May 11th. Um, it's happening over at Walt Disney Imagineering as part of a D23 event. And they're having um, a free, open thing to go listen to them talk about uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So I'm, I plan on going to check that out. It should be pretty cool. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, so hopefully um, they'll start doing test runs for y'all soon. Yeah, I think they're having, like, I think the media day is towards, like, the end of April. So I think we should be seeing at least a soft opening and opening early May. That's exciting. And then, actually, when I was uh, just in Florida, I asked one of the girls when I was, I don't know, I was buying something. And and I was and all the maps say, New Fantasyland. And I was like, when is it going to stop being... New Fantasyland. Oh, it stopped being when a Festival of Fantasy opened. They changed it to. Oh, really? Yeah, the Festival of Fantasy is the front of our map now. Oh, no, no, but I'm just meaning, when is it going to stop being called New Fantasy? Oh, never. That's the actual name of it. Well, she said, she goes, it'll probably stop being called that two years after it's officially finished, which is when Mine Train's open. It's officially done. She's like, so probably two years after that, it'll just be called Fantasyland again. We'll see. Because cause we had a new Fantasyland here in the 80s, and now, of course, it's just Fantasyland. But I don't know. They'll change it up again in 40 years or whatever. And uh, But that's exciting, because Mine Train is legitimately like the the last thing, right? Once that's done, yes. New Fantasyland is done. And what is that, like a year and a half after the opening of New Fantasyland? Or um, more? Um, it's been a while. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's been a while. Well, well, that's exciting. Um, Moving on from there, Patrick, we have something that you know, I think, quite a bit about. And, of course, Disney is buying stuff again because, like, that's their new thing is let's just buy properties. And they bought Maker Studios, which, uh, why don't you explain to folks what that's about? Okay, so, um, on the YouTubes, um... Uh, on the YouTubes? <laughs> yes, on the tubes like of you. <laughs> you're an 80-year-old man now. On the YouTubes, uh, a lot of channels are under what they call networks. And, uh, networks 
pretty much own the channel or like take a part a cut of their ad revenue blah 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 but each each network can own up to thousands and thousands of channels and um so you what channels do is they help you promote your stuff they get your ads on quicker there's a community within the networks so there's a there's a bunch of big networks in in the YouTube community especially one maker studio who owns a lot of really popular YouTube channels and it's a huge huge business that many people don't really necessarily know about but there are, it's it's a multi-million dollar business on YouTube so um a lot of a lot of bigger companies are now finding that YouTube is a huge form of entertainment and a huge form of revenue uh I mean there's like a uh, one that DreamWorks owns there's one that WB has put money into but Disney has bought out Maker Studio which is super super interesting yeah it's i mean i feel like at this point the studios don't really know what they're going to do with it 100% i feel like they just say okay this is the way of the future so we have mm-hmm. to get in and so let's just buy it up now and then you know take it from there and see what happens with yeah, it and it, it- to me, the, I guess they're like winging it, but like to to see how much these uh, networks actually are worth. Disney bought Maker Studio for five hundred million dollars. And what do you th- what do you think Maker Studios is actually worth? I mean, depending on how it's still going, uh, it's probably worth about that much. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. That like obviously Disney has tons of their own YouTube channels and stuff from Disney theatricals mm-hmm. to Disney parks and such. And, and I don't know if they were using maker studios before that. I don't know. It's just, in, it's just interesting to me that the, the studio system like is kind of being taken over by these like independent little YouTube channels and, and like to the point that they're concerned about it enough to spend, ha- you know, $500 million on it. It's crazy. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, as far as, um, as far as our generation and technology goes, a lot of people are just you getting their stuff media online now. Obviously, yeah. that's why we're doing this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting. Well, did you also hear that WWE is another the World Wrestling Entertainment is another property that supposedly Disney is looking into purchasing? This one is a rumor, but um, yeah, but I, I could hope... I could totally see. Oh yeah, it I happening. could see it. Uh, I hope it doesn't. I just, yeah. that 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 one I'm just taken back by. It. Why? The reason <laughs> the reason why I could see it happening is because if you think about it, it's the same exact demographic that they're trying to get by buying Marvel and by you know expanding pirates and stuff. It's like that young boy demographic that they so painfully want and. And I think I think Marvel and Pirates is more global than wrestling. I don't know, to be honest. Um, I really don't know what the reach is for WWE. I know it's huge, but I don't. That's an interesting point. I have no idea if if that's a form of entertainment overseas. <laughs> to me, I think I think wrestling used to be huge back in the nineties, mm-hmm. and it's still those people from the nineties who are watching it. I don't think it's that younger younger generation who got into anything past the 2000s wrestling wasn't as big as it was back in the 90s. I don't, I don't know. That's an in- interesting. I was a huge fan as a kid. Like, I used to go to the matches and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and uh, But kids these days, I mean... Yeah, I don't no... know. That's another interesting point. You're making me think a lot today, Patrick. Very I know. good. Now I've got some research to do. Yeah, no, but the, I'm thinking of the people that I know that watch it, and it is older people. Yeah, and, and it's the I'm same like, thing with me. Everyone who I know who still watch it were older generation. Yeah, I'm like, well, why? Why are you, why are you still watching it? Is what I always say. Um, but they are bringing back a lot of the older characters, and like Gold Dust came back, and like characters from my childhood. And I was like, mm-hmm. really? They're bringing them back. It's interesting. <laughs> Even so, WrestleMania or whatever just happened this past weekend, and like, yeah. It's all of old people talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Um, uh, beyond that, Captain America 2 came out, and holy crap, did it blow up the box office. Yes, it did, because it is amazing. Nice, that was an awesome dance. I wish people could see that dance. <laughs> uh, that you my, loved it. I loved you- it. It's amazing. It was great. And there's definitely going to be a Captain America 3 because there's a release date for it. May 6th, 
2016. The and... same day as Superman vs. Batman. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I love what's happening here. Yes, it is the same day, same release day for Superman vs. Batman, which doesn't have an official title yet. But um, that's kind of interesting. So we've got these two major studios now, Disney vs. Warner Brothers, and it's neither one seems like it's going to budge. And I, what ah, what do you think? Who, first of all, do you think somebody will budge? And if so, who? I think it's a matter of ego between yes. the studios. Um, I, in my opinion, I hope none of them budge. And oh, no. I, I hope that it's going to be a pretty awesome me- weekend where I can go see two great movies. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna ruin the box office, though. Like it's it's not it won't be good for either one of them. They're both hurt because of it. I think whoever budges if they do, it concedes about their movie. I think Superman versus Batman's gonna budge, to be honest. That's just my gut feeling. And the reason for that is because first of all, supposedly Captain America has had that date for a really long time. And they've just been saying a Marvel movie. Like they haven't said specifically what it was. And it's just recently that they gave the specific title. Um, Batman versus Superman or Superman versus Batman has been moved, um, at least once already. And I don't know. I just, there's something that tells me that's going to be moved again. And I th- personally think it should be, um, or at least one of them should be. It's dumb to ruin the box office that way, but cause I don't think very many people will do that opening weekend thing and see both of them like you. And if they do, they'll be sneaking into one of them. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, goodness. I um, don't know. I saw a terrifying image online related to Marvel, and it scared me. The it one was... thing is, I guess the one determining factor is which one is going to be put in IMAX. Oh, God. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> that is a very interesting point. Oh, my goodness. Wow. They both have to be. They have to be. But they can't if they <laughs> keep the same weekend. Oh no! They're gonna have to alternate or something. They're gonna that does have to be on. Okay, but before we go on, let's go back to Captain America first of all. Okay, go to Captain America. Um, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome review. You no, right? Just, just amazing. Uh, it's. I mean, to me, you were saying you don't you love standalone movies, but Marvel is just making this universe. So expansive. In which, which I think is very interesting. I will admit, I think that that's an interesting way to, to approach this. Yeah, it's so expansive in which um, past movies are relating to this movies. You have intertwined characters. Yes, you can probably go see this movie as a standalone movie, but without seeing the older ones, you I think you lose you lose something about it. But mm-hmm. I just think the... The, the comic relief in this film was like perfect, great timing. The action sequences were pretty amazing and it leaves you wanting more with the end credit scenes leading up to the new, uh, Age of Ultron Avengers coming out soon. Well, while you were watching that, I was watching High School Musical 1 through 3. So. Okay, we're gonna I, continue. I think, I think I might have won. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna move uh, to the next but- topic. No, before we move on from Marvel, I do want to mention, did you see pictures of the Mickey ear Marvel hats? They now have Mickey ears that look like Spider-Man and Iron Man. Have you seen this? No, but it sounds oh. pretty awesome. No, it sounds disturbing. And frankly, this is like what I feared when the whole Marvel thing happened because... I remember... Re- you, wait, wait, wait. You have a meet and greets in the park, and you don't think they're going to have merchandise? Of course I thought they were going to have merchandise. The Mickey ears have gotten a little bit too out of control, in my opinion. A bit too out of control. Well, there's point. Mickey ears for everything. I know, and it's it's bothersome to me, so I just had to, had to put that out there. Of Ugh. course they're going to make a Mickey ears, and I'm, I will be surprised if the Iron Man Mickey ears doesn't light up from his arc reactor. Uh, I don't... The ones I saw pictures of it didn't look like it did. Well, they're probably one in production. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Moving on from one giant franchise to another, um, Star Wars. It officially began shooting, which is kind of exciting. Um, And so we've got a second official cast member announced. Peter, Peter Mayhew will be returning as Chewbacca. So now we know we have Peter Mayhew... 
we have R2-D2. And it sounds like they're building Tatooine again for uh, Episode 7. So it's kind of crazy. I remember back when Episode 3 came out going it was the only one i ever did a midnight screening for and i remember going because i was like i have to go this is going to be my last opportunity to do a midnight screening of a star wars film so it's kind of fun and exciting that it's back but at the same time it sounds like it's just going to be like a super nostalgic movie yeah so, it, it's being completely under wraps at the moment yeah which is not surprising at all considering it was actually a big surprise i think alan horn over at Disney announced in a, uh, some presentation, he's like, yeah, we've begun shooting. It's probably B-roll stuff is my guess, mm-hmm. but still kind of exciting. Most of the casting's done. It's just nobody knows who. Um, but Star Wars Episode Seven is officially in production. Yes, yes, yes. Woohoo! <laughs> Shoulder dances today. <laughs> yeah, some exciting news. Yeah. Yeah, dance um, it out. From exciting to sad, Mickey Rooney passed away this past week. What a transition that was. Of course, Mickey Rooney, Hollywood legend in the Disney film Pete's Dragon. But I bring this up for one reason mainly. And that's just to squash a rumor that it's actually funny. When when Mickey Rooney passed away, I have some wonderful people in my life who whenever there's Disney news, they feel the need to like call me or text me or whatever and let me know. And... um a lot of people that day were like, did you know that Mickey Mouse is named after Mickey Rooney? And I was like, no, I know that a lot of people think that's the truth, but it's really not. Um, Mickey Rooney was born Joan, Joe Yule Jr. And he didn't change his name until 1932 to Mickey Rooney. Well, as I'm sure you probably know, Mickey Mouse was created in 1928. And um, supposedly Mickey Rooney started the rumors himself, but it's just not true, folks. So rest in peace, Mickey Rooney, but most likely you chose your name after Mickey Mouse, not the other way around. Boom! In your face! In your face. That's terrible. Did you just Sorry. boom in your face to a, a, a man who recently passed away? Nice. Patrick, in other news, did you hear that Idina Menzel finally made an admission? Yes, I read about it. She and- finally said that she's saying, let it go too high. Thank you very much. And by saying she means screamed, let it go way too high. Um, yes, I was just happy to like, good for her. Like, actually, I had mad respect for her because I don't know too many people who would be like, yeah, I screwed up. It should have been, it should have been a lower key. And shame on everybody who didn't tell her that in the studio. But, um, but yeah, so she, she basically said when she was rehearsing for the Oscars, it was finally realized by her that, that song is way too high. And she actually apologized to every parent out there who has to listen to their kids singing that song over and over and over again. It's become quite a phenomenon. Yeah. It's it's crazy how, how big that song's. It, um, there's a motion to move it as our new national anthem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. I would not be surprised if some president in the future uses it as like their nomination uh, s- song. You know, they all have a theme song. Uh, uh, no, they're gonna get into a scandal, and they're gonna just be like, "Let it go, let <laughs> right. it go." Oh, that's so funny. Uh, in other Frozen-related news, did you hear about the dresses that that Disney is selling? The um, no. Elsa dresses. Okay. These dresses sold at Disney stores are flying off the shelves. Um, there's none to be found anywhere. Some of them are selling for $1,600 on eBay. Like, it's crazy how how badly people want these dresses. And, and Disney keeps saying, you know, we just weren't expecting the demand. We're getting more, so just wait. We'll have them. You can buy them here. Don't pay $1,600 on eBay for these, for these Elsa dresses or... Um, yeah, Elsa. I, and, I believe, literally, I cannot walk around any Disney park without seeing an Elsa, little Elsa or Anna dress every, like, five minutes. That's so, so crazy and so amazing and, and wonderful, I guess. But, uh, that's, that's kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. Um, and other news coming up soon, we're getting some Maleficent sneak peeks at the Disney parks starting April 18th. And yours is, where's, where's it happening? Hollywood Studios. The Hollywood Studios at the ABC Sound Studio, I believe. Where, yeah. where is that located? Is that where the Drew Carey thing used to be? Yeah, it's like right across from, um, like diagonal from Star Tours. Okay. And American Idol. 
Yeah, and we have it happening at Disney California Adventure in a Bugs Life theater. And um, they did this before for us with Tron, and I believe you said they did it for another film. Lone Ranger. For Lone Ranger. And was it always in the same space? Same location. Yeah, ours originally for Tron, they did it in the Muppet 3D theater, but I feel like they want to keep that open since the movie just opened. So they're doing it in the Bugs Life Theater over at California Adventure. And that should be fun. Hopefully a nice, I think they're showing 10 minutes of the film or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah, good 10 minute sneak preview. Starting April 18th in the Disney parks and then it opens in theaters May 30th in IMAX as well. Ooh. You love the IMAX. I do. Did you, they're also having some, um, Maleficent inspired products being sold on Home Shopping Network. Have you seen these? No, I'm sure. They yeah, had, like, they're... makeup and earrings. And... Yeah, it was purses and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. And, oh, this is a funny story I was reading. Did you hear about this man who was accused of murder and has spent 25 years in jail who has finally been released due to a Walt Disney World receipt that he found? No. Did you hear about this? This is crazy. I read this, like, last minute yesterday. And this man was accused of killing somebody in Brooklyn, New York. And he he was like, look, I wasn't even in the state when you're claiming I did this. I was in Florida. But they were saying that the, the plane tickets and stuff just weren't enough proof. It didn't prove that he was actually there. But 25 years later, they found a receipt with a timestamp from a store at Walt Disney World. And that's what got this man released from prison. So the moral of the story, do not throw away your magic band because they will be able to, they can track everything on that thing. So in the future, if you're ever accused of murder, I got my magic band proof I wasn't there. Isn't that crazy, though? What a happy story. <laughs> it is a happy ending. He's no longer... I hope he, I hope he, when he got out of prison, they're like, what are you going to do next? And he's like, I'm going I'm to Disney do- World. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that's hilarious. I hope he did, too. That would be great. I was actually just reading about in... in um. And, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on his name. That Imagineer guy who worked on all the parks, Marty Sklar. In his book, he he tells the whole story about how that whole I'm going to Disney World campaign started. It's interesting. Pick up Marty Sklar's book. Dream it, do it. It's good stuff. I'll pick it up. Yeah. And then I'll put it like, down. Yeah, I was going to say, you ain't going to read it, though. You're like, I'll go to Barnes & Noble, pick it up off the shelf, and then put it down. It's a really good read. Quite good. Um, anyway, I think we're running out of time here. So do we want to jump to some trivia? Let's do it. Ask me a question. Hit me. Okay, Hit here we go. No, I don't expect you to know like the 100% correct answer of this, because no one really counts these. But um, Hidden Mickeys? No. Okay. It's like, don't even ask me. Uh, this is for Walt Disney World's Pipe to the Caribbean. Okay. But can you guesstimate how many animatronics are in this ride? Oh, let me... Th- I want to say, like, 52. That's my guess. A little higher. Uh, let's go with, like, 58. And by a little higher, I mean a lot higher. <laughs> 78. Triple digit. It, it's in, it's over 100? Mm-hmm. Okay, they're counting animals and such? Yeah, I little was, crabby things. And- okay, I was thinking just pirates. Okay, let me think then. Everything, um, 142. 125. Okay. Do you know how many are at Disneyland? I do not, but I do know, uh, do you know, here's a, here's a two-parter. Um, our Pirates of the Caribbean runs approximately eight, eight, eight minutes, depending on the backup at the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know how long, uh, yours runs? I think it's probably around 12 or so. It's, it's actually longer. almost double. It's 15. Wow. Yeah. It's a long, long attraction. Um, I, I, I remember that being, the the first time I went to Disneyland, having been a East Coaster growing up, I remember going on Pirates and being like, "Wow, this is a long ride. It's crazy." But um, and you have a, a you have a creepy dead mermaid in your attraction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you said that was such pride. I loved it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love when there's like a, a little girl on like the boat, and I'm like, "Hey, that's Ariel." Yeah, right. Ariel's dead. Actually, you did that to me. I'm not a little girl. <laughs> Moving on? Uh, <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> um, I've actually got two trivia questions for you, but I guess I'll pick one to ask because this is one of those things, not super tough question, but I read it and I don't think about it. I hadn't thought about it and it's like, that's interesting. 
Okay, so Animal King Kingdom, Disney's Animal Kingdom. When the park opened, there's an attraction based on a Disney film, but the film had not yet been released. Do you know what attraction that is? Um, I don't know. Oh, give a guess. You'll 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 shoot yourself in the foot when you when you hear Bugs Life. Yeah, it's tough to be a bug. Those that film was not released until November 25th, 1998, and Animal Kingdom opened on April 22nd, 1998. And originally, that iconic Tree of Life was not supposed to have a theater inside. It was kind of, uh, by last... Counter trivia. Okay. Uh, what day did Animal Kingdom open? Why was April that significant? Tw- because it was Earth Day. Yeah, you win. <laughs> Yeah, it was Earth Day, April 22nd, 1998. And yeah, they, um, they had no intention of putting a show inside of the, the tree. And then kind of last minute, they decided to. And, and Pixar was working on a little film called It's Tough to Be a Bug. And that's how that was born. Kind of interesting, huh? Hmm. I actually had, I actually had the Earth Day thing written down because I was going to ask you. Good for you for knowing that. Oh, is that your second part? Well, not really. Okay. I just always have little factoids written down. So it was seven months before the movie opened. Um, but yeah, kind of fun. I was going to say one other thing and then I can't remember. You don't remember your trivia question? Oh, no. Oh, you want the second? Do you yeah. want to ask the second trivia question? Okay. I was going to save it for next week, but I'll ask you. Um, this is really simple. It's 50 50 chance, but I had never thought about it. And now I know. Tinkerbell. One word or two? One. No. Tinkerbell is two words. Bell is her last name. Tinker is her first. It's Tinker Space uh, Bell. Yeah. I know. Isn't that crazy? No, I know that now because... Um, because I just told you. No, 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 no. If, have you ever watched the Pixie Hollow series video? I saw the newest one in theaters. Okay. Well, like, each, you know, each pirate fairy. pixie is a has a specific job, like... Um, Terrence is the dust keeper, silver mist, water, stuff like that. And what mm-hmm. she is, she is a tinker fairy. Okay, that she so she around. she makes stuff. But even back, like even before those films, well, yeah, I, was, yeah. I went back and researched it because I always just thought of it as I just one looked. Word. I was just thinking about her autograph, and I mm. I don't know. Do they do it in two? Or I they think should. They, I think because, they do like, it in two actually. Be- because I was fascinated by this the other day. I, I think like, they do Tinker and then on the bottom is Bell. Yeah. So, yeah, it's two words. Don't forget it. I was actually, I came across that because I was researching a different question of which I could not confirm. But I have heard in the past that Tinker Bell, when Disneyland opened, was the official mascot of the park. It was not Mickey Mouse. It was actually Tinker Bell. And the reason for that is because she was the one that introduced the TV show Disneyland every week. And I tried to confirm that, didn't get it, so I don't know if it's true. So I didn't ask it, but that's where the whole Tinkerbell research came about. Hmm. Man, a lot of interesting stuff going on. Yes, This was fun. We got through a lot of stuff today. So everybody out there listening, have a fabulous week. We'll be here next week for you. And Patrick, I will see you later. Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. 